Good morning, brethren, sisters, saints of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. Please read along with me today and what we're going to be looking at. Uh, read along with me. I make mistakes. And you need to be a Berean and search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. You need to see it and hear it. You need to hear it and see it. Okay? So read along with me. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. You know how you do that? <laughs> it's simple. Read along with me. Got a question about the context? Pause the video. Study to shoe thyself approved unto God. A workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Don't be like scripturally inept idiots like sweetheart for a little guy up in Canada and uh, all his brethren. Okay, don't be like that. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Um, a couple days ago, literally, got to use my tablet here, I had posted one of those polls, and not the polls that the firemen go down there, brother, okay? But one of those polls, you know, in the community section, and this was done two days ago, uh, according to this. And here it is. Question verbatim. You can see this in the community section. Question. Kind of a trick question, I admit, but I'd like to see your opinion. Is Roman Catholicism Satan's church? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Revelation 17.5. Is Roman Catholicism present tense defeated or has been defeated present tense satan is satan present tense defeated or has been defeated now to the pole there not the ones firemen uh, slide down brother out of 18 votes 89%, that'd be 16, said no. 11%, that'd be 2 out of 18, said yes. Hmm. All right, so the question is, the question, you're going to see a thumbnail of the cowardly lion, okay? How many of you have heard from Christians, uh, well, Satan has been defeated. He, he's a roaring lion who has no teeth. How many of you have heard that? Or are Satan's all bark with no bite? How many of you have heard that? Now, a lot of the Jesuit coadjutors are like that, especially the ones online. They're all, you know, barking dogs. Ooh, that'd be, that'd be a good one uh, for the description box. Uh, dogs that bark. Talking about the, uh, the bloke of Blackpool. <laughs> An old video. But um, anyway, how many of you have heard that? That Satan has been emasculated pretty much and that he's not a threat at all today or anything like that. He, he's a lion, but he's got no teeth, right? Now, that, that, I, how many of you have encountered that? Okay? How many of you have encountered that one? Um, that, that's, that's chilling. That's chilling. Uh, I have encountered that quite a bit within these Pentecostals who, like, believe that they have the power to call God down from heaven. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and put their hands on people's heads and imparting devil spirits into people, not removing them. Okay, and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they, the Pentecostals usually are the more greater culprits at this. 
to where, you know, this thing that, well, Satan is a lion, but he has no teeth. Okay, he's a dog that barks, uh, uh, all bark and no bite. Uh, he's on a chain and stuff like that. Um, that that's, that's very, very, very dangerous. That's very dangerous. Uh, is it the truth, though? Well, you know, you got to remember this, first of all. Um, you got to remember this, first of all. Proverbs 14, 9. Proverbs 14, 9. Just, uh, just one verse. Proverbs 14, 9. Just one verse to start. Fools, people who say in their heart there is no God, make a mock at sin. But among the righteous there is favor. Fools make a mock at sin. Or also make light of sin. Like antinomianists do, like, you know, little pretty boy, sugar bu uh, britches up there, you know, from Canada, you know, idiots like that, okay? Fools make a mock at sin, okay? Fools make a mock at sin. Proverbs 24, today is the 24th, Proverbs 24, verse 9, the thought of foolishness. Behaving, acting as if you say in your heart there is no God. The thought of foolishness of sin is sin. And the scorner is an abomination to men. Verses 19 under 22 in Proverbs 24. Fret not thyself because of evil men. Neither be thou envious at the wicked. You know... A couple people might be involved in sin. Don't be envious about what they have. Please, be careful. For there shall, no, shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King. And meddle not with them that are given to change. Now, there we did a video on this. Uh, the difference between given to change and those who have a changed life by being made a new creature. That I'll try to find that somewhere be in the description box. But given to change. Those who are wishy-washy. Those who are not true converts. Those who are, like to, who are blown with every wind of doctrine. Okay, that's what that's talking about. All right? All right? Where it says, My son, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change. One day they're a Baptist. The next day they're a Pentecostal. The one day they're a Pentecostal, then they're an Episcopalian. One day they believe in the redemption of the purchase possession, possession then they believe in believe and receive uh, ridiculous free grace or, or whatever. Okay, they go from this to that. Okay, constantly given to change, that kind of thing. Okay, <clears throat> for their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? Okay, and also Titus 1 verses. 14 on to 16, Titus 1, 14 on to 16. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess they know God. But in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. The question comes up, well, should we fear Satan? We fear the Lord. We don't fear men. You've got to remember, Satan is the anointed cherub. And as a saint, the only way that Satan would be allowed to mess with you, saint, and you can read Job 
uh, chapters one and two to prove this. Okay, that that crosses dispensational lines. Okay, uh, if Satan's going to mess with you, he needs God's permission. And if God has given Satan permission to mess with you, that's when you need to um, get some examination going and pay attention to the Lord. Okay, you think about that. Okay, if Satan's being allowed to run roughshod over you, um, you would be, okay, better to err to think, okay, what did I do? Better to err in that regard than thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think. That's when you're just like, whoa, 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 okay, okay, whoa, whoa, Lord, you're getting prayers like, Lord, what, what, okay, what am I not seeing? What did I do? Uh, Lord, uh, am I, uh, you know, that's when you need to examine yourself, okay? Um, we fear the Lord. We don't fret men. You shouldn't fret men. I mean, come on. Fear a man who's made out of dirt like you are? Well, Brad, he's six foot eight and 300 pounds. Yeah, I know. Kick him in the knee. Watch him fall. If they're men, kick him in a, in a certain place and uh, watch him fall. And if they don't, run. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a little crude. But, uh, yeah, be afraid of a man who's going to die just like you. Be afraid? No. But the thing about Satan is, we number one, we must not be ignorant of his devices. Okay, we mustn't. But see, you know, especially you've heard, I've heard, you know, and seen uh, these guys who just, you know, disregarding any threat of Satan. Now, like I said, as a saint, the only way Satan's going to be able to mess with you is if the Lord gives him permission. Okay. And if you start getting more highly of yourself, okay, don't forget this. You and I are made of dirt, okay? Jude 9 on to verse 11. Yet Mar Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Now, Michael the Archangel, okay? Unless you think, wait, like, you know, like certain of the antinomianists do, and also the Pentecostals, uh, who really, you know, and some King James Babylonian Christians, who start thinking that they're, you know, that they're, they're their own little God, that they're this, you know, God's gift, okay? Michael the Archangel is more powerful than any man, okay? Can we at least agree on that? Okay, yes. What did Michael the Archangel do when disputing about the body of Moses with the devil, Satan, Lucifer? Lucifer, the anointed cherub. Okay? What did he do? Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. You are to have some respect for Satan. Meaning, you don't mess around with the devil. And you look at Christianity, and especially these, these idiots that go into poltergeist-ridden places and, and not saved and, and talking, you know, bad about the devil. It's like, we're here to bring you to the light and that kind of nonsense. Uh, no. Number one, there, are, there is such a thing as haunted houses. And not the ones that they do at... Uh, um, uh, Halloween and stuff like that, okay? But there, there are poltergeists. There are spirits that inhabited, inhabit houses, haunted houses, okay? Saints won't mess with that, okay? We don't, we, we saints, we, you know, we're Catholics. They call up the, their ghostbusters and they come around and throw holy water and nonsense like that. Stupid, okay? Satan casting out Satan, yeah, okay? The point is, Michael the Archangel durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. 
Okay, the Lord rebuked thee. Verse 10, but these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and per perished in the gainsaying of Korah. You know, this uh, Balaam right here doesn't have the, two, the line over the two A's. That's weird. The other one does, but this one doesn't have uh, out of this, I'm using the uh, uh, Thompson. Okay, This one doesn't have the, two, uh, the line over the two A's like that. That's for who you know who I'm talking to. Okay? So, so, the question is, Satan Rome, are they present tense defeated? Have they been beaten? Present tense. 1 John chapter 3, verses 4 on to verse 9. We got a lot of scripture to read, by the way. Okay? 1 John chapter 3. Now remember, 1 John chapter 3 is not promoting sinless perfection. You couldn't do that if you tried. Paul missed that memo, okay? This is talking about the difference between he who is of the world, one who is of their father the devil, and a saint of the Lord who has the Lord himself dwelling within them. Okay, that's what this is talking about, okay? Just so you know, all right? Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Jesus Christ never sinned. Remember, kids, okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. God became flesh. Flesh! did not become God unless you're a Roman Catholic and going abracadabra, hocus pocus, woody woody, and calling uh, your little God into a cookie. Okay? Flesh does not, did not, never has become God. God became flesh. Big difference there, kids. Okay? Just, just saying. Watch out for these guys. That's a telltale sign that you're dealing with the devil when they are all about up in arms defending flesh. Watch it. Okay? And ye know, verse 5 again, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whoso abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Okay? We have not seen the Lord. I don't care, you crazy Australian a nitwit. You have not seen Jesus Christ, God the Father. None of you have seen Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? You might think you have. Uh, more likely you have seen uh, an angel of light. You know? Okay? You have not seen the Lord. You will see the Lord, but you have not present tense seen the Lord. Anyone saying, well, I've seen God, or, or I've seen it. No, you haven't. You're on drugs. And you're high. So shut up. Okay? Okay, anyway. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. We mustn't be ignorant of Satan's devices. The works of the devil. You want to know what the works of the devil are? Here, here's where it all begins. Yea, hath God said. That's where it all begins. Get it? Genesis beginning. Yea, hath God said. The very first question in, all, in the entirety of Scripture is what? Yea, hath God said. And who asked it? The serpent? You know, Lucifer, Satan, the devil? Okay. All right. 
That's the beginning of his devices. Yea, hath God said. Okay? That, that's, that's child stuff. Okay? That, I mean, that's nuts and bolts. If you don't know that, then <laughs> um, let it, time for you to wake up. Let us reason together. Okay? All right? But, verse 8. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And you know what? Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. Seed remaineth in him is the bow on the package of verse 9. Because they'll, it's, they'll like, uh, some will say, study show thyself for proof, not a God. Okay, okay, come on, finish the verse. <laughs> Study the shoe thy self approved unto God, a workman who needs not to be ashamed. Okay, finish the verse. Come on, you can do it. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Some will, I'm using this as an example. Study the shoe thy self approved unto God, Mark the Messenger. Ken Helvin. Study to show thyself approved unto God, that you be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed. I th he even did that in one of his old seminar things, where he said, and he stopped. It's like, uh, okay, dude, come on, finish the last part of it. Come on. But of course, then again, Jesuit can help, and he doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. Why am I saying it like that? Some will come to this verse. For whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. See, you got, you got to stop sinning. You got to stop sinning. Say, well, what about Paul? Hmm? Oh, what about Paul? Well, that was talking before he was saved. Are you, you're, you, you hanging out with Dave Murphy, aren't you? Smoking what that guy's smoking, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Or, or no, your, your uh, teacher is a little sissy britches, uh, Franklin up there, right? Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, to be fair, the, the antinomianist, doesn't do anything, okay? They don't do anything with uh, sinless perfection. They they're all about living in sin anyway, okay? But they're they even those guys are really quick to be like <laughs> sinless perfection, dude, okay? But there are those who go to this say, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Keep reading. Come on, you can do it. For his seed remaineth in him. For his seed remaineth in him. That is a reference unto the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. You know, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who dwells within the saved believer. That is the bow on the package. Okay? <coughs> God within you. Okay, well, we've covered this before. God within you is not... Look at me. Come here. Oh, y'all. Come here. God within you is not going to be okay with you sinning. God the Father within you is not going to guide you into sin or lead you into sin. Not going to happen. Okay? Okay? His seed remaineth in him. Okay? Then, and he cannot sin. God cannot sin. In him is no sin. Okay? You see how that works? All right? Okay? Okay? This is simple. Because he is born of God, being born again, being made a new creature. Okay, many people can have a changed life. Is your changed life the result of being made a new creature, God the Father dwelling within you, or something you've done? You need to figure that one out yourself, okay? All right? But see, again, verse 8, he that commits sin is of the devil. They are of their father, the devil, that spirit of Antichrist that is now in the world. You're not saved. You are of your father, the devil. Period. Okay? For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Yea, hath God said. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yea, hath God said. That's where it begins. Okay? Romans 6. Romans 6. 15 to the close. We got a lot of scripture we're going through today. Hope you're hungry. I ate breakfast before we started, so. <laughs> Romans 6, verses 15 to the close. 
What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? The antinomian that's like little uh, sugar britches up there. Yeah! Don't worry about it. What does Paul say? God forbid. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Doctrine specific for us today in this dispensation, by the way. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants. Servants. We have choice. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked, saved people, that ye were the servants of sin. See, the Bibles, a lot of them take out servants and put slave. We, there, there, I got that written up. There will be a link for you in the description box about the difference between slave and servant. One has a, a free will, one doesn't, okay? Very simple, okay? And the Bibles that come from Rome put <laughs> that you're a slave. You're not a slave. Interestingly enough, you are a slave if you're a servant of Rome. Hmm. And Rome is Satan's church. Let's continue. But thanks, but God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Now we're beginning to see, okay, manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Okay, now we're beginning to, a little light is beginning to shed on this, because well, what, what is that, you know, what are the works of the devil? Well, the Genesis, yea, hath God said. Okay, well, let's continue. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh, which all the devils, every single one of them, thinks that flesh is deity. One way or another, it gets around. Uh, the antinomianists, they are their own God. They save themselves by their own belief. Their faith is in their faith, not on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did. It's on what they did. We've proven that millions of times. Not millions of times, but a lot of times. Excuse me, okay? All right? I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Catholics are all about uh, lifting up the flesh. Look at Gene Kim, and some I don't, but some of the church services that he's gone to where they're throwing things around, and woo! -hoo -hoo! Pentecostals, grown men crawling around on the floor like dogs. Okay? All right? Give me a break. Flesh, carnal. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. You have a choice to make. Okay? If God makes the choices for you, then you are a robot with no free will. And saying, Calvinist, saying that man has no free will is heresy. Even the stupid antinomianist gets that one right. Okay? But see, they, they, they slight you into the direction of choosing sin. <laughs> Under the cover of religiosity, of course. Of course. Okay? For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Servants to sin. The works of the devil, yea, hath God said. Hmm. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. 
Oh, by the way, uh, what chapter of Romans is this? Come on, it's Romans 6. What comes after 6, 7? See, because, okay, you read that, you might be, see, sinless perfection. What do you do with Romans 7? That was before Paul was saved. No, it wasn't. That's present tense language that Paul's talking about. Where is that? Where is that? For that which I do, I allow not. Romans 7, 15. That's present tense. Okay? If it were before he were saved, for that I did, that I allowed not. <laughs> for what I did, that did I not. You know, it doesn't make sense. No. Paul was speaking in the present tense. Okay. Watch it. You know, you know, most people, you know, only self-righteous prigs are the ones who, I mean, and, you know, lost people are self-righteous. But, I mean, some, you know, have a form of religiosity. You know, um, only the brazenly arrogant are the ones who dive into sinless perfection. Okay? But verse 23 in Romans 6. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Very quickly, there is a bald-headed universalist in England who defended John Boshoff. Don't know who he is. Leave it that way. Um, I, I've been informed and noticed that he's doing the same thing that Jean Boshoff did. The same style. Though he's not preaching the same thing, because that would be obvious, but he's doing the same thing. Short videos giving philosophy with no actual scripture. And though, though there are those of you Christians that are falling for that guy, you deserve it. I've got no pity, compassion, or sympathy for any of you who decide to fall for that, that imbecile. None. Anyway, okay? For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Okay? Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. We see that sin and death are intrinsically linked. Hebrews 2, 14 and 18. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. And the wages of sin is death. Sin produces death spiritually and will inevitably lead to physical and spiritual okay death okay and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage the works of the devil we're starting to see now aren't we hmm For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but took on him the seed of Abraham. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. God became flesh. Flesh did not, never has, become God. Be very, see, devils blur that line. They do. Because this is what they're all about. Okay, watch it. Watch out for that. Watch. And hey, you know, look at the antinomianist. I rest my case. Okay? Wherefore in all things it behooved him, proper way to use behooved, him to be made like unto his brethren. A man. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. 
Now, see, God cannot be tempted with evil. But see, God in flesh, flesh can be tempted. Okay? Even brilliant people following, you know, the one uh, dude uh, couldn't even get that one right. Because they're lost. <laughs> of course. Okay, so... Hmm. Uh, Colossians 2. Colossians 2. Colossians 2. We're, we're letting the scriptures speak. 6 on 15 in Colossians 2. As ye therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Making the right choice. Okay, remember... God is not holding a gun at your head forcing you to do anything. Satan isn't doing the same either. You have to make the right choices, okay? Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware! Lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the love of man's wisdom, Hey, this is Canadian talk show host. That's what he excels at. Okay? And vain deceit. Ditto. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. Christ who is. By the way, if you're a Trinitarian, you know, believe in one God and three persons. A person is a spirit soul and body spirit soul and body that's what a person is okay let me show that to you okay Philippians chapter 5 uh, 23 and the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole what comes first spirit soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay? For in him, what a quinky dink, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Godhead bodily. God the Father was the soul. The Holy Ghost was the Spirit. The Word made flesh. It's the body. Okay? Very simple. Very simple. And ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. That's a big all right there. Okay? Satan is being allowed to wreak havoc on America, on the world, for judgment thereof. Okay? He's being allowed to do so. Read Job 1 and 2. Okay? In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Christ inside you. The Lord. That's what that means. That's what makes you a new creature. You're not a new creature because you've decided to clean up your life and you've changed your life. A changed life is the result of either being made a new creature... Or because you've had willpower. And it, and, endure, and it endureth for just a while. Because man's willpower can only go so far. Even in staunch people like the Jesuits who have extreme willpower. They, they really do. Even their willpower falters. Why? Because it's based off of this. Flesh. See. Okay? And it's only so far flesh can take you. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Christ in you, the hope and glory. Buried with him, what are we reading? Oh, 15. Buried with him in baptism, where also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, the death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the cross, Okay, that's what, that's, that's, what, that's what talking about. Who hath raised him from the dead. Self-explanatory. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, 
hath he quickened, made, to, made alive, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the hand, key, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. The works of the devil. The Ten Commandments, which no one except God in flesh could keep. And see, God in flesh kept the commandments, hence that sinful flesh genius was sanctified. Okay? You got to remember too the the uh, ordinance of circumcision uh, at the eighth day of the child. Okay, okay, you got to keep that in mind too. All right, all right. But see the ordinances that were against us, the Ten Commandments, the law. No one could keep. If you broke one, you broke the whole thing. Okay, you don't kill, but you covet. Oh, are you going you gonna to sit there, Mr. Hotshot, and say you don't covet? Huh? Hmm. You ever lied? Huh? No? Oh, what do you got, huh? Well, you stop saying it. Right. 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 No one could keep the law. The only one who could was God in flesh. He's the only one who could. Okay? So... The devil, before the manifestation of God in the flesh, okay? Hey, look at that. Hey, look, see that? See what he did? He can't keep your commandments. Let me kill him. Let me destroy him. I, 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 is, it, is it starting to click with you? Okay? Verse 15. Key. But, see, verse 14 is explaining verse 15. You see this? Let's let's have this let's read this in flow. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly openly, triumphing over them in it. Now see, we as man cannot keep the law. God as man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, could. Hence, we have faith on him that his sacrifices for us not being able to keep the law cleanses us from all sin. Okay? You see? That's how that works. And before that, huh? Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, verses 1 on verse 10. And you hath he quickened, made alive. If you're saved, you've been made alive. How? Christ in you. Okay, verses 13 and 14 in Ephesians 1. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that holy capital S spirit of promise, which is the Lord himself, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Okay? Christ in you. You are made alive. A new creature. Okay? That's a new creature means Christ in you what that means. Okay? Okay? Very simple. And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. If you're not saved, you're dead. The wages of sin is death. Okay? And who, has, who, who had the power of death? The devil. Uh, is it had or has? I, we just read it. Let's, let's refresh our memory. Uh, the, the Hebrews 2, um, uh, where was that? That had the power of death, that is the devil. 
No one could keep the law perfectly. There was a continual sacrificial system because, which we're going to read, the blood of bulls and goats couldn't permanently take away sin. Covered it. But the blood of God, the precious sinless blood of God, sinless because he never broke the law at all, hence that flesh there, Jake, was sanctified, you stupid little idiot. Okay? All right. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's continue in Ephesians 2. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection. This, this dispensation. Wherein in time past, when you were lost, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And a child of disobedience is not a brother or sister who gets messed up. A child of disobedience is you heard the truth and you reject it. You're a child of disobedience. Okay, we've covered that. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. In the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature children of wrath even as others. See, God's love is not for you. If you reject Christ, God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. Okay? Alright? This love will be in the description box. Alright? But God, with, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, saying the other there, wherewith he loved us, God so loved and gave, okay, loved and gave, okay, all right, even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved, grace comes first, stupid, oh, but not to you antinomianist, <laughs> no, no. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our, we're predestinated to be with the Lord. He saved us. He dwells within us. We're predestinated. We're sitting with him in heavenly places. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's what that means. Okay. That in the ages to come he might chew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Remember, don't forget this. 47 minute, 48 minutes in. The grace that little sissy britches and all the fake gracers out there offer you is not the actual grace of God. It's a counterfeit. It's a license to sin. Okay? That's exactly what it is. Okay? That's exactly what it is. All right? We've proved that. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now this is a reference unto the law. Under the law, it's like, well, I did this, I did this, I do this, I do this. Yeah, but did you come? Yeah. Okay, get the turtle dove, get the pigeon, okay? Go ahead, get the lamb, whatever you got to do, Okay? For we are his workmanship, his workmanship, a new creature. He made us a new creature by him sealing us until the day of redemption. Okay, that's what uh, constitutes a new creature in Christ. Duh! Okay. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Good works as ambassadors for Christ. Okay? All right? Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Are, are you starting? Is this starting to click? Okay? Is this starting to click with you? Is this starting to click with you? Yes. Yes. The power of death that Satan had. 
was beaten on the cross. Yes, but is he and his church right now today as you and I are speaking? Are they been are they defeated right now? No. If so, why do we still got Rome? Hmm? Why do you still got people like sissy britches up there? Hmm? Why do you still got blokes like uh, in England over there, huh? Hmm? How come you got whack jobs over here too, huh? Hmm. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, 1 on verse 14. I told you we have a lot of scripture we're reading. Because the scripture is answering this question, not me. For the law, which was before the death, burial, and resurrection, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of those of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereon too perfect. It was a continual thing of sacrifice. Hence, the law was there, but the power of death the works of the devil to keep men in a continual thing where they had to go continually offering and offering and remember under the law there was no eternal security so someone could die in sin in the Old Testament time and go to hell not Abraham's bosom and go up to heaven when the Lord died buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures you know when he went down to the prison uh, spirits and preached unto them in prison you know it was like okay I paid for it let's go we're going to heaven okay all right, you see that? You see that? Under the law. Oh, see, Satan loved the law because there was no eternal security. Hence, he had a greater ability to condemn people and to damn people. Okay? All right? Okay, now, verse 2. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sin. Meaning, if, okay, if the blood of bulls and goats was sufficient, why did they keep doing it? Hey, Catholic, why do you constantly every day going, you know, hocus pocus and then eating the cookie and drinking the wine? Why? You Catholics, man. Or you Catholics. You're dangerous. Okay? For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is... <laughs> For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and, and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written, to me, written of me, to do thy will. See, in the scripture itself, there's a cross reference with another verse of scripture. Okay, that's a scriptural uh, cross reference. Those are inspired. Okay? Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadest pleasure therein, which are at, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Good, good verse two to show you rightly dividing the word of truth too. By the way, there are stronger ones, of course, of course. But I mean, that's 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 in itself pretty decent. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, Catholic, once for all. You, you crazy Catholics think this is God, the little cookie, because you're Jesuit priest, another Christ, 
calls your God down into this. And every priest standing daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Hey Catholic, your little mass can't take away your sins. Only the God who is, Jesus Christ, only he can. Okay? And you don't got him. Because you're a Trinitarian Catholic, like most Christians are. And if you are a Trinitarian, you believe in the wrong God. And if you don't have the right God, and every priest standing daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one Catholic, one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down on the right hand of God. From hence, now pay attention, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Till. And this book of Hebrews is written for the Hebraic, Jewish Jew, uh, Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And time of Jacob's trouble. Um, the body of Christ isn't going to be on the earth. Rome, at the behest of that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satan okay, more or less, is going to be in power during the seven years of time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So verse 13, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Boy, one offering you see quite a few times, Catholic, and you're taught that your God is actually a cookie. And in how many Catholic church buildings today, as we speak, do they have the little satanic mass going on? Calling down Christ into a cookie and sacrificing him again. Yeah. Yeah. See, the things that make you Catholics dangerous is you don't even know. You don't even know what your own catechism teaches. You don't. And those who do are incensed that Francis... <coughs> okay? Uh, because he's, he's, you know, doing contrary to everything. Okay? Hmm. Rome, go back to Romans 6. Go back to Romans 6. Uh, the best way to handle this is always, you know, let the Scripture talk. So let the scripture speak for itself. Romans 6, 1 on 10. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Hey, the more you sin, and again, these stupid antinomianists say, hey, the more you sin, the more grace you have. Hey, we're not under any law. Okay, so don't worry about sin. Don't worry. Live it up. Oh, idiots. And they're not. Some of them are. But the ones who are teaching, with the exception of Jack Smack, that guy's an idiot. Okay. Uh, uh, they know what they're doing. <laughs> Hence, uh, that, that bed of yours in hell is going to be extra hot for you there, sweetheart. Okay. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. See, now that baptized is used in the form of identification. Identified with, into his death. Died to the world. Died to himself. Okay. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the cross, was done for who? Us. Okay. We are to be dead to ourselves and to that. Okay. The world. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. New life. From a new creature. Okay? Not because you have this amazing willpower. Some do. Like Jesuits. Okay? But see, because... See, 
Your new life, your changed life as a saint stems from being a new creature, Christ in you, the hope of glory. But a convert, a false convert, they endure for a while because it's flesh driven. Okay? For if you circle that if. You circle that if. Do it. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. See, the law, you weren't made perfect because the blood of bulls and goats couldn't permanently take away sin as does the blood of Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? And hence, Satan had more of a foothold on getting people into sin, you know, not at gunpoint, but as under the law, see. Okay? All right? For he that is dead is freed from sin. See, under the law, okay, that circumcision made without hands wasn't there. The Holy Ghost could be there, but he could come and go, come and go, not on a permanent basis. Okay? You, you read about that all the time in the Old Testament. Okay? And it was in that struggle there, within that context, okay, where Satan had the power of death. Hey, 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 look at that. He did pretty good, but I, he broke your one commandment. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ died, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. Now, see, this is not saying that we don't sin anymore, but that sin doesn't have dominion over us. Why? Because we have Christ within us. We abide in him. He's in us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You read Romans 7. Not even Paul could abide in Christ 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay? Not even Paul. The greatest of the church of God could do that. Okay? Read Acts chapter 21. All right? Okay? For in that he died, he died on to sin once. There's that once thing again, Catholic. <laughs> okay? But in that he liveth, he liveth on to God. We are not holden to sin. Because of the circumcision made without hands. Christ in us. The hope of glory. God within us cannot, will not sin. If you've done one of these things where you prayed, where you know that you're doing something contrary to what God says, and then you come up, well, God, I talked to God about it, and he said it was okay. No, he did not. No, he did not. No, he didn't. You've deceived yourself. Well, an example. Let's say you're a saint. Let's say your Aunt Tilly died or something and you want to commemorate her. Okay? And it's like, well, I, I want to get a tattoo. Um, I shall print no marks upon me. Or... For the dead, you know, and it's funny, um, you know, people, Christians like uh, Jesuit James White, who justifies tattoos, you know, it's like, well, it's not for the dead. <laughs> but but then, you know, a, uh, you know uh, a Christian covered in tattoos, boasting about them. It's like, well, I talked to God and he was okay with it. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. You've deceived yourself. God and you can't.
cannot and will not sin. God in you, dear saint, will not speak contrary to his word. If you are getting something that is within you saying that, um, well, I talked to God about doing something that I know that he hates and he's okay with it, um, you're, you're, you're deceiving yourself. And there may be a little uh, devilish oppression going on there. You need to get that figured out. Okay? See, Christ in you. Look at me. Christ in you is not okay with you doing contrary to his word, no matter how you want to justify it. That, that doesn't happen. And the minute you start saying absurd things, well, I, I prayed to the Lord and he was okay with it. You're, you're lying to yourself and if you are a saint, you're, you're spitting in the face of God. You're behaving no better than one of these vile, vomitous antinomianists, free gracers, who live in justification of sin. That's the nicest, that's the kindest way you're ever going to hear that put to you. Otherwise, it's going to start to get nasty, you understand? Verse 10 again. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So, the power of death that Satan had, yes, was, as they like to say, disarmed at the cross. But, okay, that is true. But, has Satan right now been defeated? Right now, today? Has Rome been? There was the, the comment section about the one guy who said, uh, and, and it's gone, um, where he said, well, Protestantism is the falling away. That's a Catholic statement. That's a Jesuit statement, okay? And, you know, I gave some scriptures to the, the dude, and then this dude came back with, we defeated Rome. Uh, uh, who's we, pal? I, I actually said to this individual, Oh, uh, who's we there, sweetie pie? Who's we? Okay? Okay? We've defeated Rome. Uh. No. No, Rome is still very much active. Uh, Rome is still very powerful. Okay? See, fools make a mock at sin. Michael the Archangel wouldn't dare bring a uh, durst bring a railing accusation against Satan. Okay? But yet you got like the Pentecostal guys who, you know, who make these outrageous, just stupid statements and minimalizing Satan, which Satan wants you to do. <laughs> because, hey, sin is good, right? Evil is good and good is evil, right? First yeah. John 5. 1 John 5. 1 John 5. Verses 1 on verse 8. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Well, the devils also believe and tremble. So, I guess the devils are saved, right? No. No, because they reject. And if you're a Trinitarian... You're rejecting the true God. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay? Uh-huh. Uh, you're a Trinitarian. You don't have the right God. And if you don't have the right God... <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. 
For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Do what he says. Is it a salvific requirement today? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. But see, if you don't, the fruit's going to be destroyed, your testimony's going to be shot, and if you're a saint, you mess around with it, the Lord might just hand you over to Satan that you might die. Okay? That the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay? Once saved, always saved is truly eternal security. Amen. But see, you have to make the right choice. Okay? For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Born of God. Born again. You're saved, you're a saint, you're born of God. Because God dwells within you. Okay? And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, see, the, the stupid antinomianists would come to this to say, see, our faith. Well, well, yes, but what is our faith in? Whosoever is born of God. The same antinomianist punks who protest that, well, being born again is for the Jews only. <laughs> uh, up the dosage there, pal. Go ahead. God loves you. <laughs> have your, you have your be a big smile there, dude. Keep, keep, keep smoking it. Go right ahead. Yeah. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay. Son of God. Son of David. King of the Jews. Son of man. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Son of God. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? So, God manifest in the flesh. There's the Father. The Trinitarian. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Huh? You don't believe in the right God. See, to the Trinitarian, the Son of God is actually something totally different than the scriptural Son of God. Okay? See, it is <laughs> to you Trinitarians. Anyway, let's continue. This is he that came by water, natural birth, and blood. Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, meaning natural birth, but by water and blood. And it is the capitalist spirit that beareth witness, because the capitalist spirit is truth. And the Lord is that spirit. And we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. One God. You have God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, dwelling within you. And the Holy Ghost, okay? Alright? Not one God doing, you know, but he, at first he was the Father, then he was the Holy Ghost, uh, then he was the Son. No, no. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, okay? Alright? But as we see in Genesis chapter 1, being able to separate, okay, which you and I are not able to do like God does, okay? But anyway, okay? For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father. The capital W Word. This is the seventh one. Oh, not the seventh one because there's the one in Revelation. Uh, and his name is the Word of God. But this is the one that the Bibles take out. They call this the Johannian comma. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. It does not say in essence. One. How are they one? Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay. That's very simple. You wonder why the Bibles take that out. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The capital S Spirit. The water. Natural birth. 
and the blood. And these three agree in one. Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? Okay? Very simple. Very simple. People, when sisters, you're gonna you're you're with child and God's like, okay, now is it what happened? What happens? Your water breaks. Okay? That that's you know, any 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 of us any of us who are alive have come through water. Natural birth. The water breaks. Okay? So, and there are three that bear witness in earth. Capital S Spirit. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. One God. Okay? Capital S Spirit. And the water. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. And the blood shed on the cross. And these three agree in one. I don't know how more, I mean, how much more simpler can you get? <laughs> how much more simpler can you get? You can't. Unless you add philosophy in vain to see. Huh? John 16, 31. On to 33. John 16, verses 31 on to 33. Not 18, Brad. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Yes, Father, the soul of the Godhead. Okay? These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Now this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. But see, it goes over into this dispensation. Why? In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of, a, a, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if his kingdom were present tense, then his servants would have fought. Okay? All right? Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 9 on to verse 14. Tribulation. Be of good comfort. In the world ye shall... We just... I beg your pardon. We just looked at that, but let's look at it again. Verse 33, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If Satan has been present tense defeated to where he's a lion with no teeth, or a dog that just barks with no bite, or that Rome has been defeated right now presently, presently, ultimately, yes. We've looked at the scriptures proving that. Yes. But right now, 1 Corinthians 9, 9 out of 14. Paul, our apostle. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. Yeah, because you're a saint. Wanting to live according to the scriptures, and everyone's looking at you. Just believe and receive, buddy. What are you? Uh, no. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. Paul's delicious sarcasm right there. So like, yeah, you guys, you, you think you're wise? Well, what Christ? <laughs> we are weak, but ye are strong. Therefore will I take pleasure in infirmities. Well, we're, we're going to look at corroborating verses to show this. See, we saints, we, we are glad in our weakness. Why? That Christ may be strong in us. 
you false converts. Your strength is right here in your flesh. Your strength is in your faith that you just believe. Your faith is in your faith. You are your own strength. You are your own God. We are weak. Ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. You're honorable because you are, you, you are your own God. You are your own source of strength. We are the opposite because the Lord is our strength. Even unto this present hour where we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. And labor working with our own hands. Being reviled, we blessed. Being persecuted, we suffer it. How do you bless again, brethren? How do you bless when being persecuted? Giving them scripture. Either if they will hear it, fine. If not, by your example. We've talked about this in depth. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you, 2 Timothy 3, of course you knew we had to go here, brother. 2 Timothy 3, verses 12 unto 13, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers, those sweethearts, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 5 unto verse 11. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Hmm. And remember, Paul makes references like, uh, be ye angry and sin not, neither give place to the devil. Okay? Yes, ultimately Satan has been defeated. So has Rome. But right now, today, as you and I speak, uh, no, they haven't been. Okay? All right? Someone going around preaching, well, Satan has been, is a lion with no teeth. Uh, they're working for him. Okay? Making a mocker at sin. All right? Puffing up man. All right? And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye all be also of the consolation. For we this, this is why I hate antinomianism. This is why I hate religion. Because religion, Christianity, is all about man and flesh. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, dying daily to ourselves and to the world, that we should not trust in ourselves, but God which raiseth the dead, having no confidence in the flesh. Antinomianists have confidence in the flesh. Christianity has confidence in the flesh. Rome has confidence in the flesh. Saints don't. I should say our own. Okay? Yes. Who delivered us from so great a death are predest we're predestinated because the Lord lives within us. Not this Calvinistic, Calvinistic nonsense. 
No. Once the Lord saves us and seals us, we're, we're going to heaven. We're going to be with the Lord. He's delivered us. But down here, we still got to deal with stuff, don't we? And doth deliver. He delivered us. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And doth deliver can get you out of troubles down here. Okay? In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us from the persecutions that were going on. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, praying for one another, okay? That for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Interesting. And now, skip, the, go to chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 out of 30. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. See, Paul was compelled to defend himself. Otherwise, he let it go. When you got these guys who are right away shoving their credentials in your face, boasting themselves, yeah. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. And labor is more abundant. And stripes above measures. Uh, and stripes above measure. And prisons more frequent. And deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times. Received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep. In journeyings often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils by mine own countrymen. Yeah, a prophet isn't without honor, save within his own house or in his own country, right? <laughs> in perils by the heathen. In perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. And what are we reading to in this? Uh, where, where are we? Oh, verse 30. Okay. In weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. He cares about all the bodies out there, all the brethren. Okay? This is not a reference onto a church building. Okay? Check out Brother Alexander's stuff about church and churches. That'll set you straight. Okay? Verse 29. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. And that is contrary to everything that is Christian. Right there. It's the the antinomianist. You scratch these idiots lightly, and they're like, well, I'm better than so-and-so. I'm better because I say myself because by my own belief. Catholics, well, we belong to the church that Christ founded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so on and so forth. See, Christianity's core strength is flesh. The saints' core strength, hope, is the Lord Jesus Christ, who quickeneth, raiseth the dead. But see, you haven't died to you. You might have been sorry. But have you been broken? You know the difference? Sorry or broken? Hmm? Sorry or broken? Yes, again, one encompasses the other. But sorry and broken are two. Watch, watch the video, okay? All right? Acts 14, just a couple of verses. Acts 14, 
And you gotta watch it with heretics because they twist these as well. 19 on the 22 in Acts 14. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. They came from Antioch. Huh. And persuaded the people. And they killed God's messenger. So they thought. So they thought. Mm. Homework assignment for you today, dear saint. Read John chapter 8. Many believed on him. And you see the justification, justification, justification. Then eventually it turns. It's like, do we not say, well, that thou art a devil? Your homework assignment today, dear saint, is read John chapter 8. Okay, let's continue. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel in that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Now that's a reference unto the spiritual. Now this is not meaning tribulation as to be saved. It means what we already looked at. For those who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. We just looked at Paul. What he went through. Us saints go through on a daily basis. Why? Because we have God the Father living within us. And we live by a standard. Christianity doesn't. Okay? If Satan were defeated today. He's ultimately defeated. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We've, we've already... We've already Done, done the work in scripture to show that to you. Okay, we've already done that. Yes. But present tense now. Satan is at work. He's being allowed to. Yes, he is. For judgment. Okay? For judgment. Rome. Rome that was never was defeated but just given to change and became the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? The centurions are the priests, the cardinals and bishops, and stuff like that, and so on and so forth. Okay? Rome has not been yet defeated. Satan has not yet been defeated. We have already looked at the scriptures. Ultimately, yes, he was defeated at the cross. But right now, presently, right now, presently, we, we, we still got to deal with it. Watch out for people who try to blur this distinction, dear friend. 1 Peter chapter 5. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 5. 6 unto 11. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, if Satan were defeated today, as meaning like some of these guys say, well, he's a lion with no teeth. Or, or he's a dog, a little chahuahua that's all bite, a bark and no bite. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Ultimately, yes, we've already looked at the scriptures, what Christ did on the cross. But present tense right now, we're still dealing with it. Okay? Okay? And we are saved. Saints. Okay? And, and see, this, this is the, the big thing. you got to remember, this world is not it. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. 
Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Hmm. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, eternal glory. The eternal mindset versus the temporal mindset. Saints dwell, work within the sphere of the eternal. Christianity is all about your best life now. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2. If Satan were present tense defeated right now today, and not a threat, as some Christians say, 2 Timothy 2, 22-26, Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, which is self-sacrifice. Peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But remember, calling on the name of the Lord is work. Yeah, liars. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. See, one of the things that the devil is excellent at in his ministers of righteousness, they excel at distraction. They excel at distraction. See, the devil knows what it takes to get you off your, off your course a little bit, to distract you. Like I said before, it, you know, if you're doing something for the Lord and then all of a sudden some idiot who's been on hiatus uh, on you know until his Jesuit masters say for him to go do the work then suddenly appear why they know that they can't stop what God has ordained if this man if this work be of man it'll come to naught but if it be of God you can't stop it but what they can do is they can get under your skin and distract you Gotta watch out for the. Gotta watch out for distractions. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. You read the account of our Lord Jesus Christ. He put his finger on that one thing you lack. Okay. Christianity calls us gentle. Don't scare them. Get them to the church building so we can get their money, and then we'll, we, you know, we'll fluff them up with uh, donuts and coffee and sugar and uh, uh, high fructose corn syrup and what the, and whatever and whatever. The gentle here, this means you don't take in one sitting the entirety of Scripture and cram it down someone's throat, or they get the uh, mark the messenger deer in the headlights look. Okay, that's what happens. That's the gentle that's being referred to. It is not a uh, sissy foot around, don't scare them, don't tell them the truth, gentle. Okay? All right? Because, I mean, you look at what the Lord, how the Lord did things, look at how Paul did things. Okay? Give me a break. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. See, you, for example, you're an antinomianist, you're opposing yourself, because you, you are your own standard, you are your own God. You're a Catholic, you're opposing yourself, okay? You're a Pentecostal, a Jeho, a moron, Mormon, okay? A Muslim, the list goes on and on. You are opposing yourself, okay? If God peradventure will give them repentance, to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. But, 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 if he's present tense defeated, and not a threat, which it puts, it puts, 
Hmm. Hmm. For a second Corinthians foe. Second Corinthians foe. Not first Corinthians. Second Corinthians four. Verses one on to verse five. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the uh, hidden things of dishonesty. Uh, being dishonest is lying. Who's the father of lies? You have your father, the devil. But instead, let's 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 look at that uh, uh, verse. Actually, uh, John eight forty four. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, yea, hath God said, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for, his, for he is a liar and the father of it. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Again, the way you serve whatever God you believe in reflects him. Look at the antinomianists. I rest my case. Justifying sin. Profanity. Weak. Not Joel Osteen could expound more scripture than little sissy britches up in Canada can. Okay? Joel Osteen can expound better. And he, he can't expound nothing than these antinomianists. Okay? That, that's, that's terrifying. Okay? That's terrifying. All right? But see, verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. This is today's dispensation, by the way. First Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 4. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection, the dispensation we are currently, presently in. Okay? And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, just believe and receive, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. And, and, and of course, uh, again, we already read this, but Ephesians 2, verse 2. Ephesians 2, verse 2. Just a very quick reference there. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Hey, hmm. while we're in Ephesians, Ephesians 1 verse, Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hmm. Hmm. That's why we're supposed to put on the whole armor of God, just not, not little pieces of it. Luke chapter 4. Now, notice something. Luke chapter 4. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. And those who want to be cute and want to twist words around would try to twist this. Okay? Pay attention. Luke 4, verses 5 on to verse 8. And the devil taketh him, taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. How does Satan do that? Right here. Right here. Ah, there you can see some of my sticky notes. Okay, see right here. This is how he does that. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Swipe, swipe. Refresh, refresh. Okay, just one way, I should say. Whoop. Good, good hands. <laughs> Beg your pardon, okay. All right, let's continue. And the devil said unto him, 
All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. And we just read in 2 Corinthians 4 that he is the prince of the power of the air. He is the God of this world in this dispensation. This was before the death, burial, and resurrection. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Look at how the Lord responds. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. The Lord did not rebuke Satan at all on anything about him being the little G-God of this world, did he? No, he didn't. And we already saw in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5, and also with the reference in Ephesians 2, verse 2, that Satan is the little G-God of this world. But he's been defeated. Ultimately, yes. Ultimately, yes. We, we, we looked at the scriptures about what Christ did on the cross, but we still are on earth. Okay? It is against Satan that the war is being waged and against his ministers of righteousness. Someone coming around saying, well, Satan is a lion with no teeth. Satan's a little chahuahua, all bark, no bite. That's someone who's working for the devil. Who's making light of sin. Lifting up man. We defeat it. Who's we there, sweetie pie? Who's we? Uh, so you defeat it, huh? And ultimately, Matthew 16, 23. Matthew 16, 23. And see, this is what you should always remember. Flesh is our enemy. And for ourselves, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We just read that. But see, our flesh is our worst enemy when it comes to you and I saints. Our flesh, this is where sin is. Okay? Yeah, we just read, we uh, wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes, that is true. But see, flesh as far as you and I, haven't you figured out that flesh has a mind of its own? And that's what Satan aims at. Hey, go to, go to the church that Christ founded. Hey, you can be saved by just believing and still live like a devil and not have to worry about it. You got a license to sin. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Yeah. Luke 11. Luke 11. Luke 11. Verses 53 and 54. We're almost done, actually. And see, this thing about distractions again. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. And 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 4 on to verse 5, He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Gain is godliness. Now right away you think about money, right? But there are other gain subscribers, gain popularity, gain views by jumping on the skirt tails of, of uh, talk show hosts and that kind of stuff. Okay? 
gain public opinion, gain popularity. Okay? Have your cake and eat it too. You have your uh, corrupt mind. You uh, dote about uh, stripes of words. Okay? And you have a corrupt mind. And get, hey, I can have my cake and eat it too. You mean I can go to heaven and not have to worry about me engaging in pornography, cussing, drinking, doing drugs? I don't have to worry about that? No, don't worry about it. Okay, maybe, maybe you sh shouldn't, but if you do, hey, don't worry about it, man. Because, hey, the more you sin, more God's grace. You, there are people that are antinomianists, live that. And some of you think those guys are actually saved. If you're an antinomianist, you're not saved. You're going to hell. <laughs> so, hey, enjoy, enjoy this life that you got, buddy. Enjoy this life that you got. I, I, hope, I hope you have the best wine. I hope you have the finest Cuban cigars. I do. I really do. Because this is the best you're ever going to get. <laughs> Up to dosage, buddy. <laughs> All right. And, of course, Titus 3. Titus 3, 9 unto 11. Titus 3, 9 unto 11. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. This is some, uh, My enemies, unfortunately, are aware that they, I get mad and I, I can be very combative. And um, that's one thing that my enemies know about me, unfortunately. <laughs> they do. They do. They know that if they, if they're, especially a couple of these cutie pies can really get under my skin and say, <laughs> you know, they can't. I myself, hey, it's a distraction. Distraction. There is a time and a place for everything where you are, we as saints, are to call out devils like that. Yes. Yes. But a majority of the time, they're doing this to distract you and to distract others. They're, they're a distraction. But see, in that distraction, they can do a lot of damage. They still have teeth. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Be one's own worst enemy. Okay? Now, uh, when does Rome actually get obliterated? Revelation 18. Revelation 18. Rome is still quite powerful today. Here is where Rome gets defeated. And people. You got guys like Stephen Anderson, Eric Lying Hart, and countless others. I think even Kent Helvin, um, and even uh, Robert Morris, or Henry Morris, I should say, in his study notes. When you got someone who's saying that Mystery Babylon is anything other than Rome, they're working for Rome! Okay? You got anyone that says Mystery Babylon's America, or Mystery Babylon is Iraq, or Turkey, or Saudi Arabia, or whatever, they're, they're working for the Vatican. Mystery Babylon is Rome. Roman Catholicism. Anyone who says otherwise is either a novice, that is a possibility, but then again, saint, you run into that, they're a novice, we'd be like, whoa, 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 hey, come here, come here, let's, let's talk. Okay, come on, all right? But most of the time, uh, eight out of ten times, that's a servant of the Vatican. Period! Period! Well, Rome is, Rome is, you know, you know, Mystery Babylon, it's America. 
Add the ad majorium to glorium, huh? The unjustifies the means, huh? You filthy pond scum Jesuit. Yeah. Yeah. Here's where Rome gets defeated. And it's during the time of Jacob's trouble. See, Rome's going to have its heyday again after the body of Christ gets redeemed. Okay? And Rome is going to be made at the first to look so beautiful because Rome is going to help the Hebraic Jewish people because those nasty Muslims are going to be stirred up. You, you sons of Ishmael, you Muslims, you're going to be the scapegoat. Christians are not going to be the problem because they're going to be in the back pocket of that man of sin, the son of perdition, who is not macaroni like that idiot uh, Jeffrey Grider tells you. And I saw, I, I was sent a link. That dude, Jeffrey Grider, still to this day is telling you that Emmanuel Macaroni is that man of sin, the son of perdition. He's still saying that. Wow. Okay. Wow! Woohoo! Okay, that guy crazy. That guy crazy. Anyway, okay, anyway, Rome gets defeated when? Revelation 18, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Verses 1 on verse 10. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted, lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily, what is that? With a strong voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird, like the little stupid one of the Trinity that goes around and poops on everybody, okay? For, one, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and... <laughs> Oh, you read the book of Revelation. It's clearly not the Jews. It's not the Jews. It's not America. It's Rome. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she hath fulfill, filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I said a queen. You know, mystery of Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Rome calls itself Mother Church, okay? <laughs> I see the queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her. When they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off, for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, the mighty city, for one hour is thy judgment come. Think of the centuries that Rome has spent to try to establish, to get ready, this kingdom of that man of sin, the son of perdition, um, you know, that one world government. And then one hour. One hour. <laughs> the Lord's just like, gone. You talk about vain. You talk about laboring for naught. But see, right now it doesn't seem that way. But see, again, their brother, sister. And this is what Christianity does not have. The eternal mindset. Because when you got some jerk coming around saying just believe and receive, what's what's the visual on? 
Just believe and receive. What what's the what's the end that justifies the means? That you could be as the world, live as the world, and not have to worry about it. You don't have to give up your pornography. You don't have to give up your filthy mouth. You don't have to give up your drugs, your fornication, your adultery, or whatever, your video games, or whatever. Those are all works. Uh, those are things that are evil that reflect poorly on the Lord that supposedly saved you. But see, when they come around saying, you know, just believe and receive, what is, it's all worldly. It's all worldly. What about Satan? What about Satan? Now, you got to remember, Re Revelation 20, uh, Satan gets cast into a bottomless pit for a thousand years. Okay, you, that, you can read the context. We're going to be reading verses 10 on to verse 15 in Revelation 20. Okay? Satan is bound for a thousand years in a bottomless pit. Okay? But sin will still be in the world. During this thousand year period, Revelation 20, verses uh, 1 on to verse 9, okay, uh, where Satan is let loose, uh, verse 7, that's talking about the thousand year reign of Christ, the kingdom of heaven. That's the kingdom of heaven. From verses 1 on to verse 6 is talking about the kingdom of heaven okay the kingdom of heaven i believe and teach is the sixth dispensation because you're going to have a man jesus christ sitting on a throne in jerusalem and of course the seventh dispensation where sin death hell the devil is eradicated eternity okay no sin that's the seventh and final dispensation. That's what I teach. Okay? All right? But while Satan is in that bottomless pit, sin is still going to be here. Hence, the Sermon on the Mount. That's when that becomes doctrine during the thousand-year reign of Christ, the kingdom of heaven. Verses 10 on to verse 15. Oh, and you Trinitarians. And the devil... That deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. Trinity. Yeah. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead that were which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire burning you're not going to get away from that okay we, we talked about this about the hell not being eternal idiots okay and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire satan's literal defeat is right there after even the thousand years of the kingdom of heaven. He'll be imprisoned for a thousand years during the kingdom of heaven. Then he'll be let loose and then that's when the Gog and Magog thing comes to pass. We got a long time until you have to even be concerned about that. Okay? There's the actual defeat of Satan. Okay? We've already looked about how the Lord um, defeated his things on the cross. Yes, but he himself is still very active today and is his church. His church, Rome, doesn't get officially defeated until Revelation 18. And Satan himself and the Trinity gets cast into the lake of fire in Revelation 20. 
Fools make a mock at sin. Those who work for the devil. I, I, this is a true thing. That wicked devil, oh, oh, the guy who wrote screw tape letters. What is his name? Sproul. No, that's not it. No, Sproul, that's not it. What's his name? Lewis. He did that thing called the, uh, yeah, Lewis. Uh, um, yeah, it's Roman Catholic Sproul, uh, whatever, Lewis. Okay, yeah, Lewis. He wrote the screw tape letters, okay? In that, there's a part where the one older devil was speaking to the younger devil that, you know, suggests to them when it comes to the devil, uh, one who has red horns, a little tail, and a pitchfork give you an image of Satan that it's not. Hollywood, for example, you know, with uh, vomiting green pea soup, stigmata, and speaking backward Latin and stuff like that. Now, those things are devil manifestations, absolutely. But, as our enemy is, master of distraction, you got to remember, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He was the anointed cherub. Every precious stone was his covering. His tablets, his pipes. Ah, he speaks beautifully. He sounds beautiful. He looks beautiful. That's why sin is so beautiful to you. That's why fake religions, that's why fake gospels and fake Jesus, Jesuses from uh, the Pentecostal to the Catholic to the antinomianist. Okay, these other Christs look so appealing to you because they're not the actual Christ. Okay? So someone saying, minimalizing the actual threat of Satan still today, and of course Rome, they're working for him. They're doing the ultimate, yea, hath God said. First Corinthians 15. We're almost done. First Corinthians 15. Saints don't care. <laughs> it's like, uh, we know, Brad. <laughs> Verses 23 and 28. First Corinthians 15. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. This is obviously a reference unto his second coming. Okay. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. That's a key verse there, because though Satan has been defeated in a sense, he's still very active right now, isn't he? Yes, he is. And his church, Rome, and all her whorish daughters, like the fake gracers and the, uh, and, uh, the Pentecostals and the uh, morons and the Jehos and uh, the Muslims and the Taoists and whatever. Okay? For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Mm. He must reign until, till... Okay, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Meaning not all enemies are put under his feet yet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifested that he is expected, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. And look at that, um, verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Hosea, Hosea 13, 14. Hosea 13, 14. Just one verse. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. 
See, you and I, as it is appointed on the man once to die, and after this to judgment, and after that to judgment. But see, we're going to be with heaven, and we're going to be in heaven with the Lord. Okay? You don't only live once. All right? All right? Our spirit and soul are eternal. This is what dies. Okay? I will, re I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall not be hid from mine eyes. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51, on to the close, and then we'll be done. This is the redemption of the purchased possession that is being talked about. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We're not all going to die. I mean, there are going to be some that are alive when Carpenter happens, okay? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye twinkling of a, that's quicker than a blink twinkling of an eye is so fast quicker than snap of the fingers quicker than a blink in a moment in the twinkling of an eye you could be having your cornflakes and then all of a sudden come up hither happen Everything in history, everything in this world, when that happens, everything changes. This is why people like sissy britches are so dangerous. Because they're trying to tell you that salvation doesn't change. So when salvation does change, you'll be snared and take that mark of the beast and damned to hell. When come up hither happens in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, everything changes. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Verse 56. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. God, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory in eternity already. Yes, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But while we're down here, we're on Satan. We're in Satan's play box. In Satan's sandbox, I should say. Okay? We have the victory. Yes, we do. The cross. That's the victory. But see, we right now, we're in Satan's sandbox. We're behind enemy lines. Especially being on YouTube. That's, you know, in the hands of the Vatican. Okay? It is. All right? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That is going to be it for this little video. Um, I, those who are going to twist and deceive, they're going to do what they're going to do. Okay. We have just gone through the scripture of truth and we have been and we have been shown through the scripture what the scripture tells us about this. We just went through scripture upon scripture showing you 
what God says about this very thing. But see, Satan who distracts with his, yea, has God said, people. See, here's the thing. you got to make a choice. Okay? God has given you. <laughs> God has given you the way to himself. But see, you've got to make the choice. You've got to make the choice. Okay? You've got to make the right choice. God doesn't hold a gun at your head forcing you to be saved. Satan doesn't hold a gun at your head forcing you to reject salvation. That doesn't work that way. You need to wake up. Let us reason together, you and I. Okay? Thank you so much for watching. Any questions? Got emails, addresses, and whatnot? And, oh, hey, sweetheart, up the dosage there, uh, uh, sugar britches. Mm. <laughs> so, thank you, brethren, sisters. I love you. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.